Hello, I'm Michael Glass from MichaelGlass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is only your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see that all three major indexes, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, and the S&P 500, all rose for the week, actually pretty significantly. Uh, you can see the Dow Jones up over 2%, S&P basically about 2%, and the NASDAQ just under 2% for the week. What was the key events that led to this spark? Well, as you can see, Friday, the S&P basically bounced about 2.5%, and that has was the uh, best one-day gain since December. Uh, however, despite that big gain on Friday, the S&P uh, still in the month of June in the red. Uh, we also saw, uh, due to the proposed beginning of EU sa oil sanctions on Iran, which started to start on July 1st, we saw a rally in crude oil, 9.4% there on Friday, which l allowed it to go up uh, above 6% for the week. Um, the big news that we had coming out here on Friday was that the Eurozone officials finally opened the door to Spain's banks for the bailout funds. Um, and they also increased the uh, funds, the ability of the uh, Eurozone uh, Central Bank to uh, have more money to uh, deal with the situation in Europe. So uh, that gave some strength, some uh, um, confidence to the market. And we saw uh, the Euro uh, rally uh, almost 2% against the dollar. As far as corporate news, we uh, we still have J.P. Morgan in the news, and the as you recall, earlier in the month, you know, uh, it was uh, it was reported that uh, we had J.P. Uh, Jamie Dimon, the CEO, uh, testifying both in front of the House and in front of the Senate Financial Committee uh, about this loss that they had, and he he guaranteed that they were going to have a profit for our new rounds of earnings. Um, but this week it was reported, initially they said it was a $2 billion loss, and it was $3 billion loss, and this week it was reported that it may be up to $9 billion in losses. And so uh, that sort of helped hurt the financials. This week we also saw Google unveil its new line of Chromebooks. And, you know, I'm kind of torn about that uh, as uh, the, the geek in me. Uh, okay, I can hear some of you saying it. I'm a Mac guy, so yes. But I'm, I'm not talking about the, uh, you know, which is better. I'm talking about the concept of a Chromebook. The concept of a Chromebook is simply a, a laptop that is cloud-based. Everything that you need is in the cloud. You know, so all your applications, all of your functionality is in the cloud. And that brings about two concerns. You know, what happens if the cloud goes down? Now, you know, I've never heard of it. And I'm sure most people think it might not happen, but what happens if the cloud goes down? You lose your data. Remember, the purpose of of the cloud is so that you don't lose your data. You know, how many of us have had our hard drives die? Uh, so, but is the potential that the cloud could go down? And the reason that you have yourself in the cloud is not to lose it, and you lose it. But more important than that is a laptop that is internet dependent. What, meaning that it's basically a paperwork weight unless you have the internet somewhere around. I don't know if we're there yet as a country. Now, internationally, you know, internationally, uh, access to the internet, mobile uh, internet, broadband internet is leaps and bounds ahead of where we are here in the States. Uh, but here in the States, because, you know, obviously here in the States, you know, uh, uh, we don't have it everywhere. So the, the concept is what I'm, I'm referring to there. But I digress. 
And in that uh, hating everybody besides Apple, RIM had horrible announcements. Um, they're, they sh they're shipping out less uh, BlackBerry, the phones, they're shipping out, certainly their playbook, you know, contains to be a, a dismal failure. And of course, they uh, announced that their new uh, BlackBerry will not be available until 2013, when it's supposed to be uh, available for the holiday season of 2012. Nothing really went on here on the economic side this week, the real drill the market. Really, it was the Eurozone um, giving confidence to the market on Friday. So going into next week, what do we have? Nothing. Although we are basically getting ready to gear up for our new rounds of earnings, uh, we don't have anything next week. Keep in mind the market is closed on Wednesday for July 4th. And you can see we have employment situation on Friday. Okay, so uh, as we look at our market simulators, the first thing we're going to look at is the dollar. And one thing that's interesting is that you can argue a couple things. You can argue that we have a, a – well, let me zoom in. You could argue uh, a head and shoulders pattern in here. You can argue that we have an M pattern starting to form in here. Uh, we have a shoulder, head, shoulder. Uh, or if you can include this all in one big move, you can say that's, uh, that's what I'm saying. You have a double top, triple top, whatever you want to say. But you can really see the impact on Friday's price action. Now we found a little support in the 50 moving average. We'll see if we find support at 81. Uh, 0.225 here like we did before. Uh, we're also 81.5. Will we find support here? That is kind of where we wick. Uh, but you can really see the impact of Friday's action. So sideways, uh, but being very cautious about these uh, triple tops, double tops, inverted head and shoulder, I'm sorry, head and shoulders patterns, uh, M pattern. Got to be very concerned about that if you're uh, playing the dollar. And of course, we have the inverse relationship. We'll really see the inverse relationship. Uh, uh, right now with gold and the dollar and you could, we just saw the weakness of uh, the dollar I zoom on in here and you can see this nice big candle here that gets us back almost up to 1600 here on gold so gold which has been choppy but what's interesting uh, and I'm just seeing this now so I'm just kind of winging it uh, but if we look at what's going on in here Eh, maybe not be as impactful as I thought it was. Uh, we certainly have a little more impactful if I do it that way. We have some potential resistance coming in here also at 1620. Uh, and you can see that in this price action in here. But look at that move here on Friday. And the last thing is crude oil. Now we talked about the big move of crude oil, and you'll really see that. Uh, look at that over here. I mean, look at that big move. We went right through uh, pretty much the whole market profile there. And of course, what we're hoping for is that we'll see some resistance here at 90. Uh, we've got uh, 50 moving average coming down here to may act as resistance, but we're in this 80 to 90 channel now. Um, as we were coming down, there was some resistance here at 85. You can see some wicks in here, so that'll be interesting to see if we get that. Uh, but you can see we got through a lot of this volume ac accumulation, and you know we could see this continuing to move higher. And again, the big thing about that was the euros, the European Union's sanctions that are going to begin on Iran's oil uh, on July 1st. So um, you know this down action. I'll, I'll say sideways for right now. Not ready to go bullish yet. Gonna zoom on in here on our daily chart of the S&P 500. And the first thing I want you to notice is that we had a swing high here back in uh, late March, uh, early uh, April. And that was met again later uh, at the end of April, early May. And we kind of hit it a little bit here in mid-June, but you can kind of see this is kind of where we're at. So we have this 1370, and this downtrend line is basically where we reside, where we closed here on Friday. So this is that great candle from Friday, that again, that 2.5% gain on Friday, the best day since December. 
um, gain. Um, you can see the big data went down here from last week. But you can see we, we've come into resistance. Our indicators are all now back to being a little bit bullish um, uh, as we get closer to being overbought. But we are at a key point of resistance. And so, you know, there's nothing wrong with being here. We certainly can stay overbought for periods of time. We did that for the most part through our big move up here. Uh, during this big move up, we stay pretty much in overbought range for a long period of time. So there's nothing wrong with that. But we want to make sure we have momentum. And certainly the jobs numbers next week can be that momentum. Now we scroll out and go to our weekly time frame and zoom on in. The one thing we'll note is that uh, when I talked earlier about being down for the month of June, we're, we're not down for the month of June. So, uh, you know, I, let me put that in the context of what happened in May. We still have not taken back that move of May. We, we are uh, up for the month of June. Um, but again, you can see clearly again this downtrend line and where we're at. Our indicators on the weekly also turned uh, bullish here, although MACD hasn't fully crossed over yet. But what we'll really see here, and what we want to zoom in here, is on our monthly. Alrighty. Sorry about that. And this is where we'll get a clear view of what I'm talking about. Remember, May was not good for the market, and June has not taken that all back yet. We are at a key point of resistance. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit more here. There we go. So there's June. Have not taken back all of that move from May. Um, our indicators are again in the bullish overbought range, but again, we can stay that way for a long period of time. Remember, this is our monthly chart where we're stayed, staying and overbought so that's that's not the thing so the key is to recognize we need to have the momentum to keep the market moving higher and potentially our jobs number next week can do that and uh, earnings season starting back up may bring some positive news also and so speaking of earnings let's move over to the NASDAQ which has been the biggest driver for 2012 come on down here to the daily there you go and we'll zoom in on our 2012 price action. And what we'll see here is that we're back in this range of 28, 50-ish up to 3,000, but we really need to get above uh, 29, 50-ish. Uh, you can see uh, was resistance here. We had some gapping going on here. We have a swing low right here, and that's basically where we're at. So much so, I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. You know how much I love my support and resistance line. So that's what we need to get above in order to get up to that 3,000 uh, price level. So we, we need to get above this 2950-ish, 2947-ish to get into this next range up. Uh, and one thing that's interesting, if you look at it, for the most part, these are big candles in this range. So that's, we potentially could get a big move here. But on our daily, they did turn uh, uh, bullish here. Uh, this week, again, largely because of that Friday's price action. Zooming in on our weekly, we can see uh, the month of June here, and we can see uh, the big move here the last two weeks. We thought we had when we had this inverted hammer, you know, that, you know, I had to say that I was a little bit concerned. Still room to go to the upside on a weekly. So daily and the weekly have room to go to the upside. Our monthly. It's interesting because S&P did this and something with this monthly slows down, uh, I think it's one platform here. Zoom on in. Again, you can see we have not taken out May's price action, but May is at overbought. I'm sorry, not May. The monthly is overbought, so we do have a, a, a conflict there between our shorter time frames and our longer time frame. And again, the key is going to be gauging momentum. We are in the summer, which you typically means lighter vol volume, lighter volatility, and we'll need the catalyst of the jobs numbers of some type of earnings to really get the market moving one direction or the other, or we may be range bound for the summer. Okay, so we're going to look at the daily chart here of Apple. And of course, the market was good for Apple too. We can see that on our market profile over here. 
Uh, but what we're coming into, uh, we did get just above the 580 level, but you can see if you zoom in a little bit here at the 590, there's also some resistance there. So um, it's good that we're above uh, the gap up for way back here. Uh, but also in the last month, we've seen some resistance at 589, 590. But for that being said, uh, Apple starting to look sideways to up. Amazon. Zooming in on Amazon. Well, Amazon looks pretty good. Of course, Amazon had this great earnings. We gapped up uh, above our 220 price level that we've had in for a while. Um, it was support, support, we broke through it. And now we seem to zoom on in here a little bit more. We can see we're back above it. Um, you can see where we have our next level around 232, 235. But Amazon, I'm going to say sideways, sideways to up, even though it's still a little bit of a downtrend, but liking what we see here. Ah, uh, Facebook. Facebook um, had, had lived, uh, but it came right into the resistance that we've drawn in, and it's come back, but it's finding support. So it's in a nice range between $31 and $33. Facebook sideways, maybe even sideways to down. Notice one thing over here. Again, if we get below $31, you can see on a market profile that there's plenty of room to fall to get down to $27 because on our push-up, we had two big candles, which means we didn't have a lot of volume pushing us up, so we can easily fall right through that. Google. We talked about the news of Google this week with the new Chromebook. And Google um, is not falling. You know, Apple, Amazon, Google is actually a little bit sideways to down here. And we did once again find support in this 560 range. And it's trying to get back here into the 580, range. But, um, you know, I'm going to be nice to say sideways in Google. But you can see that we certainly have a, a series of lower highs. Um, if we can take out some of these, then I, I'm going to have to say sideways or down. Sideways, sideways or down on Google. What about Goldman Sachs? Does it live? It didn't really participate that much in Friday's price action. We got a little gap up here, but we didn't see the push afterwards. So we're back in this 94 to 100 price range. You can see there's some wicks here at the 97 price level. Um, so I'm just going to say sideways to down on Goldman Sachs. Uh, IBM, I think that's interesting about IBM is uh, you can say that we probably have a wedge starting to form here. You can see the ultimate support here of the 200 moving average. That's great. But as we zoom in, what I, I, I noticed as I was getting prepared for the video is that we really could come in here and start to draw you know, some type of a wedge here. So we have the support of the 200 moving average and we have this downtrend line coming in so the market's really going to have to want to break one way or the other we're starting to see uh, that consolidation uh, build up we'll see the same sideways on IBM and we'll see the same thing here on Intel uh, again we see our if I take this line here and draw it down this is what we'll see and again, the 200 moving average acting as support. I'll switch back over and zoom in for us. I'm going to say sideways on Intel also, but you can see that consolidation uh, range beginning to form up. You can also see it here on the market profile. MasterCard. So a lot of sideways stocks, a couple sideways up, mainly sideways, some sideways to down. So we were really not seeing that leadership. Maybe uh, we'll start seeing leadership from our stocks as the th uh, new round of earnings season starts. And, of course, we have our jobs numbers coming up as I continue to repeat. Um, uh, kind of like Apple, above the 420, above a key price level, uh, but it has a little resistance here in the 435. Sideways, maybe sideways up. High sideways. We still have this swing high here, and we have a lower high here. So that's, that's sideways. Can't say sideways up. Um, Netflix. I may remove Netflix. Netflix was on our list because of the, you know the big flyer, and it, now that it's flying down, uh, you know we brought in Facebook. I might have to send me you know post a comment, bring me a stock that you want me to include, but Netflix is no longer to me a leader. Um, sideways on Netflix. 
it gets above 70, we might get up to 74. Sideways on Netflix. And finally, Priceline. Give me a suggestion of who to add. Used to have Rim, you know, Rim's Rim fell out, so Netflix is falling out. Um, sideways price action in here, in that nice range between 620 and 680, right in the middle in the range, dead zone. So sideways for Priceline. As we come to our education spotlight, we're focusing on what's your plan. As you know, we certainly have an emphasis here on having a training plan. And although we're not going to talk about what it is, today we're going to talk about why you should have one. And here we have that there was a survey of some students at the Harvard uh, Business School. And certainly these are smart individuals. They're at Harvard. And what they did is they said they interviewed them. And they brought them back 20 years later. So they've graduated, they've moved on in their life, and they come back. And what they found was that those students who had goals, uh, goals uh, for once they graduated were worth uh, five times as much as those students who had no goals. But what is more important is that the students who had written down their goals were worth 10 times as much. So you can see that you potentially can double your wealth, double your net uh, income by having down written goals that you're trying to achieve. Again, I know that it's boring. I know that it's uh, cumbersome. And I know that it can sometimes feel like a nuance, a nuisance. But having goals is one thing. Having goals written down is another thing. And having an action plan is the final thing. You have to have the knowledge, you have to have the opportunity, and you have to take action. And writing down your goals so that you can have a plan and steps to accomplish your goals can greatly increase whether or not you actually accomplish that goal. As always, please comment, like, subscribe. I've been dealing with a lot of spam here lately, so I know that's not you guys, but <laughs> I had a lot of spam here lately. So but let me know what you think. And you know about our resources. We have our coaching program where we help you come uh, develop your trading plan so that you can have actionable steps rules-based trading versus trading on a whim we have our managed accounts that can benefit you and of course we have some tips for our stock traders all of these can greatly increase your profits at the end of the week but in the end it's all about your ability to develop a trader's mindset based upon a trading plan so you can have a psychological capital to pull the trigger on each and every trade thanks guys and i'll see you next time Thank <laughs> you.